Bush meat is the meat of wild animals. It can be taken from a range of species. Antelope, bush pigs, buffalo, primates, and then extending to rodents and bats, birds, reptiles, anything that is providing a source of protein. And it's actually an incredibly important nutritional source for these people where who live in places where agriculture is limited. These hunters have been living off the forest for generations. Indigenous communities, they're subsistence hunters. They know that the land is all they've got and the, uh, the wildlife on that land is all they've got. So they'll be killing these animals, but they'll be doing so in a sustainable way that doesn't deplete the ecosystem. The problem is, is when the trade goes commercialized to feed urban centers and even overseas markets. The hunt began at dawn in an area of rainforest uh, in the Central African Republic, a country that has been pushed to the brink of genocide over the last few years. So once you got to the capital, we then had to head west into the rainforested area where um, indigenous groups live, like the Bayaka, perhaps better known as pygmies. And that's a bit of an old fashioned colonial term. And then other local communities who live off the land. The next three days, I was living with this community, going on foraging with the Bayaka pygmies, uh, who are absolute masters of the forest. And uh, I was very keen to embed with some bushmeat hunters. An intermediary uh, got me access to the, um, the local hunters, joined them just before dawn. And it was a humbling experience because there I was in my fancy Merrill walking boots and waterproof trousers and fruit and nut bars and all the rest of it. Lots of water to keep hydrated. And on the other hand, these hunters who were dirt poor were just in flip flops, torn shorts and t-shirts or vests with no water and no snack bars, but completely in tune with their environment. And they set off and they set off with four shotgun cartridges, only four. And I thought, God, in the UK, you have people going clay pigeon shooting and you just fire off hundreds of rounds during a session, but these guys could only afford four. So they set off at pace and it was a struggle to keep up with them. After an hour, uh, one of the hunters, Theodore, his eyes turned up to the canopy and uh, he pointed up there, uh, it was a hornbill. I couldn't see it, it was impossible to see, even when I was actively focusing on it. But he'd just spotted it while he was hooning his way through the jungle. He told me to keep quiet, he got his old French battered 50 year old shotgun, went deeper into the bush, shot it, and there was a thud, and he collected the animal, held it by the beak, and headed further into the rainforest. Every so often, Roger would stop, scan the top for any telltale movements. He would listen out for any telltale rustle of the leaves. He would even stop to sniff the air to detect any remnant scent of primate or bush pig. And then he told me to stop. He kind of put his hand up. He said, wait there. He whispered and then he kind of crept deeper. And actually he pointed up at the canopy saying, there's a monkey. Again, I couldn't see it anywhere but he detected it aimed a shotgun fired and uh monkey died came down with with a thud into the ground to carry it back got the tail of the monkey tied it around its neck and it's dead by this point and then would use it kind of like a living shopping bag. that's how he was holding the monkey around the tail and the hunt was done and we and we left the rainforest. We went back to the hut where I was staying and they butchered it and they ate everything, every internal organ, every bit of flesh, cartilage from the bones and they cooked it up in a big pot. Monkey stew on the one hand, hornbill on the other and everything was eaten. I think anyone looking at this bushmeat hunt could potentially be quite shocked and it's easy co to connect this with the the wider biodiversity loss that is happening at the hands of uncontrolled bushmeat hunting but there is a bigger picture here 
indigenous communities have learned over countless generations how to live in harmony with their environment. You know, that means knowing where, uh, when and what to hunt and what to fish without depleting the ecosystem. Over millennia, they have become finely attuned to their local conditions and they know how to preserve wilderness areas. They know how to live it alongside with the community of other non-human beings that live in that community, that share it with them. And they know how to utilize their natural resources without exhausting them. Who really are the best allies that we have in this fight against the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis.